every year, techies from all around the world head to Las Vegas for the Consumer Electronics Show. But if you step outside the Strip, you'll see that this city has been making strides towards becoming a smart city for years. We're outside City Hall right now. We're about to meet with the director of IT, Michael Sherwood, to learn more. You've been in this role for four years now, really kick-started these initiatives. So what specifically are you talking about that you put in place that's enabling this kind of lifestyle sure. here? We've done a lot of different things. I think the things we're most proud about, though, is some of the things we've done around park safety. Um, we have sensors in parks that manage um, safety within a park. So if a park closes at 9 p.m. at night and someone goes into the park after that, um, we have automated sensors that use AI um, and basically play a very nice greeting to say, you know, thank you for coming, but our park is closed, you know, please leave. Um, let's say that person maybe walked into the park because they had a medical issue and collapsed. Well, in today's world, how would you know that that happened? You wouldn't until the next morning, possibly, when someone saw the individual. With our system, we're able to monitor and we know that an individual is in the park um, and we're able to then alert our public safety officials to say the person's been there after closing for maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes. Go ahead, we should probably send someone out there just to see what's going on. So those are types of things where we're actually taking and saving labor um, and keep, keeping our current workforce creating efficiency at the same time. Okay, and you know, how much money would you say that Las Vegas has invested in its smart city initiatives? And do you have any idea of how much savings you've had? We've had a lot of great partnerships with private entities. Um, to date, we've spent, we've, we've received probably around $15 million in in-kind donations from these pilot projects. The city has spent roughly zero capital. Um, just recently, we did spend a little bit to buy some cameras and actually expand one of our pilot systems out just to get a better feel for it. But we've been very lucky by being so aggressive and be willing to pilot our solutions in our innovation district. Um, we've been really able to learn from these experiences and not have to expend money on the technology. Um, and so our, our buy-in right now has been our labor and time. Um, from a savings perspective, hard to quantify yet. I mean, what all the savings components are. Some of these systems are only a few months old, some are a year old. So we're still calculating a lot of the savings, but you know, honestly, as we scale them out, we're gonna start seeing more of that, of that savings capability. Um, and sometimes it may not be just a labor savings, it could be an enhancement, providing better services than we had before. Right, well I saw you have that whole innovation center that you just built uh, like 10 minutes away here. Yes. But when you, and we did take a walk along here, and we saw there are cameras along the streets, and I'm wondering if, you know, is there sensitivity around uh, privacy and data, especially in light of the news where you know Las Vegas was just hacked? Well, let's let's take the the, the issue of being hacked. We we were not hacked. Um, the news story that was released kind of overstated what actually occurred. Um, we had a cyber incident, um, very minimal, um, and we were able to basically mitigate that um, within a few hours of it being recognized by the systems we have. Part of those systems are part of our smart portfolio of technology, um, and that's ensuring that these systems maintain a level of safety, um, not just our operational IT networks, but our IoT networks as well. Um, let's take the other part of your question as far as um, you know, privacy. A lot of the systems we use, we specifically don't take any facial features. So we use infrared cameras, we use heat sensing cameras, um, and, and systems, so we're not grabbing facial features. Privacy is a very con big concern, um, not just among the population here, but everywhere in the United States. So all we're trying to do is just count how many people might be in a park at a certain time when we're closed. So outside of the parks, you know, where else can you see these solutions at work? We have over 60 intersections that have um, technology that allow us to send signalized timing. So when a light goes from red to green and green to red, have that capability to send that data to a vehicle. If you have a chance while you're here, download Lyft and uh, go ahead and get in an active BMW, which is an autonomous, um, basically, taxi. Um, and we'll, you're actually talking, that vehicle's talking to our infrastructure and our infrastructure's talking to the vehicle, so vice versa. Um, so it's, it's, it permeates all over the innovation district downtown. Um, there's cameras in certain locations, there's sensors in other ones for temperature. Um, climate conditions, there's ones that are counting the number of bicycles, the number of people, um, all types of different variations of technology and sensors that different companies are testing here. Um, and then, you know, hopefully going to market with those. And do you think anything needs to be done more from a federal level to make it easier for you to put forward any of these initiatives? There's always, I mean, look, it, uh, taking assistance and, and help um, from other agencies, you know, funding, financial funding would be a great opportunity 
for the federal government to invest and help you know cities work through some of these solutions. Um, you know, additionally, some of the laws, if we can move them a little quicker so that we can make some of these changes, are very beneficial, but everything takes time. And I think, you know, slowly we're moving in some of those directions. I think a lot more cities now um, have autonomous vehicles or autonomous vehicle testing programs. And so I think over the next year or two, you're gonna see some more. Um, it just, I, I wish from a technology perspective, it would move a little quicker. Um, and that the federal government would create some standards in certain areas. I think one of the biggest areas that, that we don't have standards is, is in the data collection. So how do I store temperature data versus how does a city, you said Florida, you just had an interview with, how do they store temperature data? And you know, in the future, how are we gonna be able to compare and share data if we're storing it differently? What solutions can we expect down the road? There's so many things. I don't even think we'll have time to go over all the exciting things that we're looking at doing. Um, we have, um, we run a grant recently um, to do autonomous vehicles in our medical district. Um, and so we're very excited about that project. Over the next two years, we'll be rolling out four autonomous vehicles in our medical district. So that's, that's a very exciting project. Um, we're starting to get into some private 5G systems. Very excited about the capabilities of being able to move and deploy sensors faster throughout the community. Um, also using that to break the digital divide. Um, one of the challenges we have, I think a lot of cities have, is um, making sure everybody has equal access to the internet. Um, the internet's so important today and from an educational standpoint as well as just from a learning standpoint, um, not having that resource and that access um, is limiting. Um, so, you know, trying to work on some systems and ideas to work on that. Um, and then I think, you know, really we talked a little bit about our smart parks, but there's a lot more to that scenario that we can add to it. Um, we're looking at taking a park and, and kind of, you know, I don't call it, re I'll use the term, I'm technology, rebooting it. But can we put that, take that asset of a park and, and still keep it as a park that's enjoyable for people, but can we add electric charging stations to it? Can we add signage that if you have a birthday party there, you can put up photos on a digital sign and you know different interactions. So how do cities evolve and start looking at those? And so those are things we're already working on and looking at. So you know it's a very exciting time um, to be in the field um, and to continue to work for such a great city with great leadership that allows us to undertake some of these projects.